We're looking at the ultimate guide to vignette methods in Affinity Photo for iPad. Now this is suitable for the desktop or the iPad, but this one has actually been done on the iPad. So, although you'll see a couple of um, commands there that are obviously desktop, just skip past those and uh, we'll see what it looks like on the iPad. Now what is a vignette? A vignette is usually a gradual darkening of an image towards its edges, although this can be lightning or even different colours. I don't mean lightning as in the sky, I mean getting lighter, or even different colours. And why vignette? The reason for a dark border <clears throat> is that the eye tends to move away from dark and towards the light. So it's if, a, if there's a dark vignette around a photo, it tends to push your eye towards uh, the image in the centre. It bounces off the less attractive dark areas and towards the nicer light area in the middle. Traditional vignettes are lightest in the middle, as you, and you're probably familiar with them, so we won't dwell a lot on that. And a reason to use light vignettes is that the eye is attracted to lines, which it follows in order to find interesting shapes. And you've probably seen this in other photography, where um, the lines in a, in a landscape, for instance, can lead you to a distant shape. Now, let's get into the methods. And I'll go through these fairly quickly because... These methods are also in a text file that you'll find in, as a download on my website and possibly even, if I can get it there, on my um, Facebook group page. Now method one is using the develop persona and it's the simple remove lens vignette. It's a very gentle, very subtle effect and is not enough to create significant vignettes. In fact, it barely makes a difference to the image. With very light images, you may see it, but if an image already has some darker areas in it, like this one, this nighttime shot, you will barely see it. If you look closely there, you may see that it's darker towards the edges. Hmm, you may not notice it though. But simply in the raw persona, lens tab, remove lens vignette. And that's all you do is turn that on and it will do the job. Drag intensity, change lightness and darkness. And you can see the intensity slider just below it. There's zero intensity at the moment. Method two is again still in the developed persona. And it's the post crop vignette version. So turn off remove vignette and turn on post crop vignette. This is stronger than the remove lens vignette and it's only available as a radial vignette as it's intended for lenses which are round and may not suit a rectangular image. But you can see it has applied very faintly a vignette. Again it's not a really strong vignette but it can be made so. Adjust with intensity left to darken, right to harden, which means brighten, scale at the size and hardness is the amount of blur. If you increase the hardness you'll end up with a circle and so on. Method 3 Photo Persona Vignette Filter We're still in the photo persona now not in the develop but in the photo. This is the standard tool that Affinity gives you for vignettes Quick and to hand, but does not let you place the center nor change the shape. And you can see if you look closely at the image there, you've got a, a fairly defined center. Now I've defined that on purpose, so you can actually see it. You can adjust all that. You simply click on the vignette in the filters and apply it to your image. Method 4. Now this is the Nix color effects but they're not available on the iPad yet. Maybe in the future, but at the moment you can't do filters on the iPad. But I've included that there because it's in the original document that I found. <clears throat> Method 5 is basic black painting. Now I've got this in a number of <coughs> excuse me, in a number of parts because it's uh, there's too much to put in one slide. 
It's a quick and dirty method, painting on the original image. Okay, if you have a <coughs> if you have a steady hand and are saving only as a JPEG image, but lacks the non-destructive ability, so it is destructive. So you select the brush tool and color black or white or other as you wish, or even the erase brush. A soft brush with very low hardness, low opacity or flow. Paint gently around the edges. And that's all there is to that one. Method 6, basic burn painting. This is a variant on method 5, but the burn brush is designed to darken the image on which it is painted. You can see there's no extra layer there. Paint gently around the edges. You need not create an oval. You can paint over areas where you want to reduce attention. Building up layers as you go. Don't try and do it all in one hit. Method 7. New layer, black painting. So you can add a layer as you can see in the layers. New fill layer. Find the brush tool. Color black or white as, or other as you wish. Soft brush, low opacity and fairly low flow. Paint gently around the edges and build up layers as you go. To remove black, use the soft erase brush, doing it gently. Method 8. New layer black removal painting. This is similar to method 7, but instead starts with full black and removes black to expose the original image below. This is often easier as it avoids having to fiddle around the corners. Again, it allows you to flexibly choose which is light and which is dark. And a number of steps. New fill layer. Create a new pixel layer and fill it with black. Layer, new fill layer. Turn down the opacity enough to see the main layer beneath it. Around 50% is good. Use the erase brush tool. Very soft, low hardness and high opacity. Paint gently from the center or area of focus. You need not create an oval. You can paint over areas where you want to increase attention. And the usual multiple strokes. Method 9. Rectangle and mask. This is a variant of method 8. And using a rectangular shape rather than a painted layer and a mask layer rather than painting the dark layer. That's saving on file size, really. But that's not going to make a lot of difference. Draw a rectangle over the whole image and set the fill colour to black. Reduce the opacity of the layer to 50% so you can see through the image. You could use a black pixel layer, but the rectangle saves file size. Add a white mask to the rectangular layer. In other words, select layer, new mask layer, or if you're on the desktop, click on the mask icon at the bottom of the layer panel. If the new mask appears above the rectangle layer, drag the mask into the rectangle layer. You watch for the blue edge marking. Use the brush tool and paint over the areas in the middle of image to restore normal brightness. And correct misbrush strokes and alternative methods is to make the mask layer all black, then paint black in white for the outer darker areas. The usual variations of a mask. Now, method 10, mask darkened duplicate layer. You can see in the layer panels there's quite a group of things going on there. Duplicate layer, darken the whole layer, decreasing exposure, brightness or luminous in the HSL uh, studio. Add a white mask to the duplicate layer. If the new mask appears above the duplicate layer, drag the mask into the duplicate layer. Watch for the blue rectangle again. Use the brush tool. Paint black over the area in the middle of image to restore normal brightness. And so on. Very similar to method 7. Method 11. Layer effects. 
the FX inner shadow. This is a trick that uses no extra layers but remains non-destructive. It puts a dark area around the border of the image but the shape cannot be changed. In other words, ellipse. Click on FX and click on inner shadow. Ensure the box is checked and the inner shadow name is highlighted. Opacity write up, color black blend modes normal. Type a big number into the radius box, for example 1000, to force it past the default 100 pixel size. And you can see down the bottom there on the radius it's 1000. Play with intensity or leave it at zero to change the hardness and you can see that the huge radius has forced out a black vignette around the image. That's a very that's a very useful trick that one and very quick to do. Method 12-1, the masked adjustment layer. Using a live adjustment layer reduces file size gives a choice of various ways of darkening. You add an adjustment layer to the image that can make it darker. A good choice is curves. Now you pull down the center of the curve for a non-linear darkening effect. And you can use HSL luminous brightness exposure levels. Now there's a lot of text there so I'll show you in the next slide what it looks like. So you've got the curves adjustment layer and you'll see uh, the box with the diagonal line through it. Just pull that line down a bit and that darkens the image. It gives a slightly non-linear darkening effect. Push up to make the image lighter. Experiment with that one, it's quite useful. Now there's number three. And what I've done there is select a soft brush and paint black over the area in the middle of the image to restore normal brightness. It's a mask so you can paint in it. Now that's quite a that's quite a hard vignette, but maybe I'm trying to emphasize um, the TV tower in the center of the Shanghai city image there. Okay, method 13, one, radial gradient pixel layer. Again, you've got a new fill layer. Blend mode is multiply. Adjust the opacity to 50% to make the layer below visible. Click on the gradient tool on the left toolbar. On the context toolbar, make sure you select elliptical. And in the gradient tab, have elliptical, click on the left end of color line. Now you're going to revert, what comes up by default is the other way around. Now here's the second slide, in the gradient tab you have elliptical, click on left end of color line, set to black. I've got the, I've got the radials on the left hand side, you can have them on the right hand side in which case you reverse the white and black and set to white. So the left edge there is black, the center is white. I'd recommend you experiment with this one. It can be a little difficult to get right, but it certainly works nicely when it does. Now this one's similar to method 13 in a lot of ways. And having read the text there, let's move on to the next slide, 14.2. And you can see it's very similar. And you can see there's a small vertical line on the horizontal axis there, which I've got right out near the edge. That takes the ellipse out towards the edge. Now, method 15. Number one, again, rectangle and ellipse shape. Now this is the same as method 14, but a shape-based ellipse rather than the other method. I won't read you all the text there, you can read that at your leisure. And there's 15.2, the rectangle and ellipse shape. So you can see I've got them grouped there. And it gives a, a quite a darkened um, vignette, but nevertheless quite effective. Now 16.1 layer effects, 
a gradient overlay radial. Click on gradient overlay, ensure the box is checked and the gradient overlay name is highlighted. Various instructions there, follow those down. They're also, as I said, in the text file. Now you're reversing these. You can see you've got the white on the left and the dark or black on the right of that bar. And you reverse that using the control that comes up. You've got the black dot, the plus sign, um, the dual pages, the, the um, rubbish bin and the reversal tab there. You click that and it'll flick the white to the right and black to the left uh, or back the other way. But that puts your ellipse, as you can see, around the edge of the image. 16.3. Change the size and shape of the ellipse with the X and Y scales. Move the central focus point of the ellipse with offset X and Y. So you could, you could put that, the central focus of that just about anywhere on the image. Now this is an interesting one. The raw ellipse overlay. overlay. Use this in the develop persona. You can see up the top there, I'm back in the develop persona. Turn down the exposure, basic tab on the right hand panel, to darken the whole image until outer area is dark enough. Click on overlay gradient tool on the left toolbar and on the top toolbar select ellipse. Although that's on the desktop, on the iPad, it's down the bottom there, elliptical. Draw ellipse to cover the center area. Don't worry that it's red because that's just showing you where it is. Move the ellipse as needed to the key focal point within the image. Turn up the exposure until center area is returned to normal brightness. There's the second slide in that. And you can, you can see where I'm turning up the exposure and the centre area has gone to normal brightness. Now if you want to keep this, don't forget to press develop. Now still in the develop persona, select the overlay paint tool. Select the suitable brush size, usually quite large, and the hardness very soft. Paint in the edge area that's to be darkened and it will appear red. You can see there I've painted red all around that. And it's a very rough vignette, but there you go. And the brush size is 500 pixels, the hardness is 50%. You can experiment with those. Click on the basic tab on the right panel. Turn down exposure to darken the edges, and that's what will happen. And you can see there that it's darkened it down. And that's the ellipse, the vignette that I've ended up with. Now, 19. Use this in the develop persona as a way to define areas with linear gradients. gradients darkening unimportant areas. Now, I won't read you through this. If you've got this far, then you're doing really well. Multiple raw linear gradients. Click on an overlay tab. Click on add gradient overlay, the coloured circle at the bottom of panel if you like. Draw a gradient near the edge from the edge in with the red indicating where the change will be. And you'll see that in the next panel. There you go. You can see I've drawn that in there and that red area is the area that will be shaded. That's the area that will be changed. Click on the basic tab and adjust the exposure to darken the edge. Note the value of exposure. Exposure. Don't be fooled by the red reflection in the water there from the tower. You can see the red shading has disappeared and become quite black. You can do that as often as you wish at any angle to build anything from a rectangular to any other shaped vignette. Don't forget to tap develop between each application of that um, elliptical line because you can't do more than one at a time. So you do one, develop, do another one, develop, 
and so on. Build up the development layers, if you like. That's a fairly effective method, that, because you can apply it anywhere in an image. Now you can create any one of these vignettes and make it into a template. In other words, another layer. So you create a vignette using one of the approaches above. Pull in an image, or if you like, delete the pixel image pixel layer and save the image. Open your normal image file, open your template file, click on the template layer and copy it. Switch to the image file and paste. The vignette layer should appear above the image layer. Adjust blend modes as, nip as needed, typically to multiply. There we go, and I've imported a, a template with a very light vignette. Put it on the top and set it to multiply so it doesn't block out the entire image. And you can see I've got a, a light hazy image with a very light vignette around it. And that, I think, is just about the end. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching. This has been fun. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe and spread the love. The document is from an original Dave's Vignette Guide for Affinity Photo, which I'm sure you'll find with Googling. And as he said, here's a discussion and fairly definitive list of 20 vignette techniques to use with Affinity Photo. Now Dave's put them in a document, I've put them in a video um, YouTube tutorial for you. And you'll find Dave's file, the, um, the text file with all the instructions that you've just read through um, on my website and possibly anywhere else if you want to go Google them. Thanks for watching.